In this video, I'm going to introduce uh, the NCBI's human genome resources for people who are uh, beginning their studies in the profession but don't really have any experience with it or limited experience with it. Uh, therefore, it's not really going to be a detailed view of the uh, entire resources that are available. Uh, just really just an introduction. So if you already know the website, uh, this probably may not help very much, but it will uh, give you a gateway if you're unfamiliar with the website. And of course, the purpose is to introduce uh, introductory biology students at the university level uh, to these kinds of resources. So the first thing we got to do is launch uh, the NCBI human genome web page. And the easiest way to do that is to go into Google and just type in NCBI human genome and it'll pop up. Uh, students in my class can go to the course website, and if you notice over here on this uh, menu, you've got a links uh, button. If you click on that links button, it'll take you to uh, a bunch of resources that we've used throughout the semester. If you scroll down here under where it says genetic references, right under the OMIM, you've got the NCBI human genome resources. So you can click on that. It'll take you to the website that we're shooting after. And again, you've seen this before if you've been in my class, but here we have ideograms of uh, all of the human genes, all the human chromosomes, pardon me, and then a search bar. Uh, what I want to do is introduce one particular gene, and that gene is the uh, hemoglobin beta protein. Uh, it's the gene itself is called HBB. If you remember, the uh, human hemoglobin or mammalian hemoglobin in general is a tetramer of four proteins, globin proteins, in human adult hemoglobin. There are two alphas and two betas. Uh, make up the molecule itself. What I want to do is look at the beta chain. The name of the gene is HBB, so I'm just going to type in HBB and click return or hit the search bar. Either one fi is fine. And then it gives you a list of a bunch of things that are associated with this. Now, the reason why it gives you this list is because most genes have synonyms and other genes interact with them. And so in the descriptions of these things, uh, there may be uh, interactions that are noted in the in the documentation. So all of that's going to come up in this table. But notice this gene itself, HBB, has a number of different names to it. This is really common. The reason is that genes were typically discovered by different techniques uh, in different laboratories and they were not recognized as being the same thing and so each different lab gave them different names. And so now we have a, a, a standardized nomenclature and that's what this official gene name is, but there are other aliases that are given to you here. But HBB is the gene raptor, so I'm going to click on it, and it takes us to uh, a page that has a bunch of information about that gene. The beginning part, the summary, just gives you a sense of what type of gene it is. In this case, it tells us it's a protein coding gene, and the protein coding genes, of course, are those that have a coding region that specify the primary structure of a protein, which we'll see in just a moment. It gives you the official full name from this uh, crediting website or crediting uh, body right here and it's called the hemoglobin subunit beta. Gives you some information else also about how it's linked in, in uh, the different species that you that, that have this gene and so forth and we're going to scroll past all of that and go down to this right here where it says genome regions transcripts and products and what you're looking at here this insanely complex thing is called the genome browser. Now most of this stuff we're going to ignore. I'm not going to go through all of this. The th Part I'm interested in is this green line right here. This green thing right here is indicating where exactly this gene is. This is the chromosome represented up here. Each one of these numbers is numbers of kilobases, thousands of bases uh, that, are a, that are a particular locus on this uh, chromosome. And here's the gene from start to finish right there. It goes all the way down through here. Now, those students who've been in Bio 181 will recognize this gene. We've been through this, and I've shown actually the structure of this gene in class. But you notice it starts up here. And I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll this over here a little bit so we can see it and put this beginning part of it in the middle. And you'll notice that there are some parts that are dark green and thick, and then light green and thin, and then dark green, thick, light green, thin, and so on. Remember how genes are structured. Eukaryotic genes have introns, these sections that are removed before the gene is expressed, before the protein is expressed, and the, ex the exons are the parts that hold the information about how to build the protein, the actual primary structure of the protein. That's what's being shown in this uh, diagram. The dark regions are the exons, the light thin regions are the introns. Now if I just cursor over this, it'll pop up with this, infer with this little information box which gives you a bunch of information about this particular gene. You'll notice where exactly the cursor is. If you come down here, it says we are in exon two of three. There's three exons. This is the second one where my cursor was when I started right there. 
and it tells us the protein length right here. The protein is 147 amino acids long, uh, and it gives us the length of the gene and all of that information right here. Now, if you click on this, it'll also give you other information. It'll give you two other things. This is the DNA sequence that it's showing, but underneath this, after you click on it, it will show you the RNA sequence, the messenger RNA sequence that's built from this structure, and it will also uh, give you the protein sequence right here. So this upper uh, green line is still the same thing. It's the gene on the DNA. This purple line here is the transcript, the messenger RNA transcript that uh, arises from this gene, and then this section down here, this kind of orange, is the protein sequence. All right, I'm going to power up on that. To do that, I'm going to come over here to this slider bar here, and I'm going to click the uh, zoom. And you'll notice it'll just zoom us right into what's in the middle of the page here. And I'm going to move this over a little bit so that that border between this light green and this dark green shows up so I can show you what the light green's all about. Okay, so we're just going to keep zooming and keep zooming. And you notice when I, once I get close enough, you can actually see the, uh, the nucleotide sequence. And notice right there where the dark green starts. ATG. You should recognize that as the start codon. That's the beginning of the coding region and also notice right there that's also the beginning of the protein. So ATG is what's being read and you notice it right underneath this in the protein, if I can get this off of the screen here, you notice right underneath the protein here there's an M. That's for methionine because ATG codes for methionine. And then GTG codes for valine, so V there and so forth. And this is telling you the uh, translation. It's translating this DNA sequence for you. So there are times, I'll show you this uh, in a much more complex genes, there are times when to get the information about introns and exons, you actually have to curse it over the messenger RNA sequence. But at any rate, this tells you what's going on. This is the beginning of the coding region right here. So if you remember, up here, upstream, this is the section that is part of the promoter that's also transcribed. And in fact, if we come this way and see where the messenger RNA starts, it starts right there. And if you recall again the structure of your genes, this promoter region continues to the left, and there should be a TATA box here, meaning it, there should be the sequence that is the sequence part of the, the sequence that tracks uh, the transcription factor and starts this whole transcription process. Now remember, in this particular gene in human beings, there has been a mutation. It's not TATA, it's CATA, C-A-T-A, -A, and there it is right there. You see, there's the 5 prime end. The lower strand is the 5 prime end. You've got to watch that. Sometimes it's the upper strand in this browser, but in this case, the lower strand is the 5 prime end here, and there, C-A-T-A-A-A-A. -A 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 -A. That right there is the TATA box. And remember, we're reading the bottom strand from left to right because that bottom strand is the 5 prime to 3 prime end that way. Okay, so this gives us an, an overview of this particular gene. Here's the start sequence right there, that ATG. It gives you the protein sequence, the translation, all the way through the first exon. I'm just going to keep scrolling across until we get to the end of the first exon. There's the end of the first exon, the beginning of the next intron. Now notice, this exon goes C, A, G, G, A, G, G, are the, are the last three letters of this translation sequence right here. Now, the reason then that this stops is because nothing in the intron is translated. So there's none of these are codons. For example, this TTG, that GTA, those are not codons because they're not in a region that's actually being read. So we can continue on here and see what this intron looks like and continue to scroll and scroll and scroll and see what the intron looks like. Now, notice the intron's huge. It's much longer than the exon. That's common. That's typical. I'll show you another example of that very shortly. And now we're into the next exon and so on. So you can see then it's very easy to figure out how many introns and exons there are in these proteins just from this uh, simple browser. Now, I've also noticed this or mentioned this before. These red boxes down here are places where there are known variations, places where they've sampled multiple humans and found variations in these. Like for example right here, if you click on this, it'll highlight right there that AT sometimes has an A, a there on the upper strand and sometimes has a G. So there's some, most of the alleles are A, but there are other alleles in there that are G. If you want to get information about it, both clinically, what effect it has, if any, and so, and, and any other information, you can go to this box and click on these links, and it'll give you information about what that variation actually does. But before we do that, I'm not actually going to do that. What I want to do is go back, go back to here where we first searched. And I want to show you a different gene. Now, the hemoglobin beta gene was one of the first ones that we always use when we introduce genes because it's relatively simple. It was discovered early. 
But I want to show you a more common gene, and this one is of importance right now. This gene is the gene that the novel coronavirus that causes COVID-19 appears to use to actually infect cells. It's called ACE1, and so I'm sorry, ACE2. So I'm going to go to the ACE2 receptor. That's the actual gene that I'm after here. I'm going to hit search, and it'll take us to this gene. I want to just explore it quickly. So I click on the ACE2, just like we did before. Here's the summary information that we have. I'm going to go down to the genome browser, and it takes a little while to pop up, but there it is. Okay, now look at all this. There's a bunch of these green lines now, not just one. The reason there's a bunch is because this exact region of the chromosome makes more than one protein. So there's more than one coding region gene in here. So what you have to do is cursor over these to figure out what this is. I'm going to just hit the first one. You see the gene at the top says ACE2, angiotensin converting enzyme 2, and the messenger RNA title. This is the variant X2. But if we go to the second one, this is also ACE2, but it's a different variant. This is variant X. Uh, X1, the other one I think was X2. So in this case, we've got two different genes, two different proteins essentially being produced by the same exact sequence of DNA. And in fact, it gets even more complicated. Look at down here. There's another gene that overlaps with ACE2. It's called BMX. And it is unrelated to ACE2, not entirely unrelated to it, but it isn't the ACE2 gene, but it's the same region. This green section overlaps with this green section. And it's because that same section of DNA codes for two different genes. That's common. That's really, really common. Notice also this one, the arrows are pointing to the left. So that means that this gene is being read from right to left, a different strand, and this one being read from left to right. So what I want to do is focus on this. I want to focus just on the, on the X2 variant, the one at the top, the longer one. So just like before, I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to start to... Uh, zoom in on this. Now notice, it looks like everything in here is in fact uh, intron. Remember the, the thin lines or the introns? Uh, but see these little tiny things right here, these thick ones? Those are the exons. The introns are huge. They make up the majority of this gene. All of this stuff here is intron. The only part of, the, of it that's exon are these little thin parts. Now let me just power up on this so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to keep powering here and here, and these exons are going to get bigger. You see that? So here are the exons. That's an exon right there. There's another exon right there. But the rest of this stuff is intron. And if we click on this, we click on that, it'll do what it did before and give us, here's the messenger RNA for that sequence, and here's the protein uh, uh, sequence for that. So again, we come back over here. I'm going to uh, power out a little bit because I want to go all the way back to the first exon. I'm going to just scroll this back all the way to the first exon. We come back over here. I'm going to put this in the middle so we can see it. And now I start to power back up right here on this first exon. Now remember, the first exon should start with what codon? You might want to think about that for a moment before I answer it. Okay, what should be the codon that's right there at the beginning of the first exon? Okay, well, let's see if you're right. Let me come in here. I'm just going to keep powering up until we can see the entire sequence right there. And we're just about there. One more to go. And there it is. There's the sequence. And look, there it is. ATG, but just to double check, that's the 5 prime end reading left to right. So this is the ATG start codon, and again, it's methionine. So we have here, then, the translation of this ACE1 gene. That's the first exon, and it continues on and continues on. Now, question is, how many introns, how many exons, and how big is the protein? Well, if we cursor over the messenger RNA this time, you'll see that this is exon 1 of 18. There's 18 different exons here, which means there's 17 introns. The number of introns is, is 1 minus the number of exons. And the, the number of amino acids, if we uh, cursor over the protein, the number of amino acids, it tells us down here is 772, which makes it a relatively long protein. Most proteins are less than 300, at least most of the ones that we typically describe in textbooks. So here, then, is the intron exon border for the ACE1 for the first one. There's first exon, first intron. Now, I'm going to cursor over this intron here, the messenger RNA sequence, and you can see here, again, this is one of 17 introns. So that's an introduction to the uh, NCBI genome resources just to get a sense of how the genes are structured. There's obviously much, much, much more information in just the browser itself, let alone all of these other links that you can get to. And we will teach you all of that when you start getting into your upper division courses.